Good evening, everyone. Happy Thursday, and welcome back to another episode of Apollo's Odyssey. I'm your host, Apollo Asteria, and we got James Gilliland in the house today, who is, of course, uh, the founder of ESETI Ranch and owner of ESETI Ranch and host of As You Wish Talk Radio, as well as um, many books, author of many books. So um, I'm about to pull him on here. And uh, but before we get started and get into that, I want to remind you all to please uh, check out my art if you haven't already. That is all up on shamanspears.com. Uh, this is how I fund myself and keep myself going. So I make these handcrafted energy chilling devices, which are like a mix between wands and spears. I have a couple of collections still available right now, and I'm working on a new one. And I also am going to be speaking at a conference, the Mount Shasta Summer Conference, July 7th through 10th. So if you want to come check that out, I actually have three tickets to sell to that event. And that's kind of my way of, or how I find myself going there. So if you would like to help support me and go to the event, check out uh, the tickets here on my site, which is at shamanspheres.com. We have Laura Eisenhower, Brad Olson, Brooks Agnew, uh, Ben Shostein, and a lot of great friends of mine are going to be speaking there. So definitely check that out. Also have a lot of organite creations up on here and my I Believe in Humans t-shirt. So that is all over at shamanspheres.com. So let's pull James up here. And by the way, if you haven't seen my show yesterday, uh, I, yesterday, I went over the uh, UFO hearing and pulled up some clips from that. So that was pretty fun. And actually, after today, I won't be having another show for a couple weeks because I am moving to another spot in the Hollywood Hills uh, in a few days here. So it's going to be a lot of work. So, But once I'm moved into my new spot, I'm going to have a lot more space to uh, get all mad scientist mode into my spears and more production value with my show. So that's going to be great. All right, let's get James on here. Hey, James, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm excited to go over today's show with you. Uh, you know, you mentioned you want to do poser disclosure. <laughs> I really <laughs> like the idea of that. So I'm excited to hear what that's all about. Uh, you know, before we came on, you were talking a little bit about the ranch. I know you're kind of doing some work up there right now. I still haven't made it out to it. Um, I really need to do that sometime. So yeah. Yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy. We just had a workshop up here and it was just awesome. The energy was incredible. And that, you know, we, there were so many ships that came in. I, I got like five ships in one frame and they're just all night power ups, everything. And they really put a show on for the last workshop. So they're still here. They've been here for 30 something years and, and they haven't stopped coming. That's amazing. I'm excited to see it one day. Um, and, and the clip you sent me, is that actually from the ranch there? Or is that from somewhere else of the space fleet? No, that's actually from uh, uh, the live feed from NASA. Oh, yeah. right, right. Okay. Yeah. And so we have, we're, we're actually putting the other stuff together right now. I'm not really computer literate, you might say so, 
when it comes to editing and, and all that stuff, I, I never really learned how to do that. So I have to have other people do it. So <clears throat> they're in the process of putting these clips together that we just filmed, you know, last week and, and, uh, and they'll be up on the website as well as the event that we held here. And it, it was just an amazing event. There was a lot of, uh, deep, deep healing, a lot of emotional processing, a lot of, uh, contact happening. Um, just like all the above was going on. Was that your, uh, self mastery healing workshop you told me about before? No, that's coming up. That's coming up in June, but, uh, this, this mm -hmm. was just, uh, uh, some really good friends of mine, uh, came Clark and, um, Cameron, uh, set up a workshop and it was like, a. uh, transformational spring transformational workshop and they had uh they had you know the the beautiful music singing uh the bowls you know the this the crystal healing the what do you call the um sound healing all that stuff you know to accompany you know and they're out in the medicine wheel and and uh in the plating circle and we have a lemurian hill that has really strong lemurian energy but uh and they went on a on a little research thing to where Bigfoot hangs out and had some experiences there. But uh, it was it was it was quite an interesting event. A little different than the the self mastery ones that I do are ambassador training and, and we really get down to business like who's who in the universe, safeguards for, for getting clear information, uh how to, you know, discern, you know, whether or not you're working with higher dimensional beings or not. And a lot of that training unfortunately is lacking a lot of people have actually allowed themselves to become like puppets for these other beings and they they may not have you know these are self-serving beings in some cases and they don't have their best highest and best good at heart that's yeah you know is that kind of what you're talking about with the whole poser disclosure topic yeah. for today's show well kind of what i wanted to talk about mainly was this this uh, government thing and, yeah and, Okay, so here's <laughs> the thing with this deal. First of all, if you're going to have contact with spiritually and technologically advanced beings, you have to have an open mind, loving heart, and pure intent. And you can't be... Oh, <laughs> looks like we froze out there. I'm not sure if you guys can still see him talking. Um, yeah, this happened last time I did a show with him. So I know he's got a... Okay, was... there we go. You're back. Cool. Yeah, that was interesting. Whenever I talk about this, everything freezes up. You know. Yeah, <laughs> I was just saying that. So, so anyway, you know, you look at the characters that are running this thing, the government people on that end. And, and if you've done any research at all, you know these guys are pathological liars. They're... A club, you know, they're, it's a criminal cartel. And so you're going to these people and asking them in the government to go ahead and uh, tell us the truth. All And they don't know how. They, they don't even know how to tell the truth. Do you so, think the people that are running the task force, like the two guys that were kind of like the spokespeople at the hearing, do you think they were just blatantly lying? Or do you think they actually kind of didn't know uh, or weren't read into a lot of um, these cases? You know, I don't even watch it anymore because it's the same thing. It's a controlled <laughs> narrative and it's the same thing. And you got people pounding their fists like they're here and we need protection and we need money for protection. And and they have the same people, you know, doing the same thing over and over again. And and then they have these people in they're called planned opposition and they're shaking their fists at the government. You know, you need to tell us you need. And in their backhand, they're getting the check, you know. So, uh, you know, and they they work for certain agencies, and uh, you know, they're they're lockstep with uh, the you know the Illuminati boys and the Clintons and the Podestas and all these people. So they brag about it. So, so I mean, you you look at these people that we've turned over contact to, and and I ask why, and the the real contacts are happening you know, with people that are very spiritually advanced, you know, you look at monasteries, you look at ashrams, there's ships over ashrams all the time. The, the, a lot of the lamas and the yogis know exactly who they are. The native American elders know who they are. 
and they have all that information. So where is that? You know, where are these people? Where, where's the contactees? You know, where's the children that are having contact? You know, that it's not there. So all of this, what's really contact is happening. And you have to rise to the occasion to, to have the experience because these are very spiritually and technologically advanced beings. And so if we're rising to the occasion, they're going to meet us halfway. But, you know, the way they're going about this other stuff, it, I've never seen, you don't demand that they show up. You don't go after these ETs with F-16s or whatever else we can drum up. Even, even our space fleet is no match for them. You know, it, they're so advanced. Uh, we have footage. I actually just talked to this guy. I'll probably get this footage where a black helicopter was coming in on a ship and the ship's sitting there and it's vectoring in on it and the ship just disappears. And I was just going to say, like, why choose something that can just go interdimensional? <laughs> so yeah, it just appears, and then it reappears on its tail. And all of a sudden you see it turn way around, make this big sweeping turn, try to come back again. And it's sitting there and this helicopter's coming in on it. It goes, gone. You know, and it goes by and and then it reappears on its tail again. This went on forever. And then finally it flew right up their tail. It it flew right up their tail and, and dematerialized and just wow. Their energy covered the whole the whole helicopter. So I mean, you see things like this, okay. And here's these guys, military intelligence, right? How intelligent is it? to want to go toe to toe with these guys. I mean, if you were intelligent, you'd say with, with this kind of advanced technology, maybe we should be making friends with them. Maybe we should find out who they are. And if there are negative ETs out there, maybe we should enlist them to help us clean the planet up and get rid of them. And, uh, but all this other stuff is a joke because they are here. There's a huge uh, planetary liberation going on. There's there's the Palladians, the Orion Council of Light, the Arcturians, Andromeda, and Syrians. All these beings are coming here right now. Whole flotillas of ships are coming here, and they're part of this process, and it's well underway. But while these guys are shaking their fists and banging on tables and and making <laughs> demands, that it's happening all around us, you know. But all we have to do is rise to the occasion. So, so that's. To me, yeah. in a way, I mean, I really don't get frustrated, but to me, it's it's getting really old. Yeah. For, you know, for 37 years here, we've been here. We've proved that contact is happening. We tell people exactly when and where the ships are going to appear, and they do appear. We did it for Ancient Aliens, which totally censored me out of the whole show. <clears throat> the what? Show. Recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ancient aliens came out. Did they here. come? They came up to your ranch and then censored you out yeah, of the show. Yeah, they came out to my ranch, and I had two friends here, Peter Slattery and uh, 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 some remote viewers, and and um, John Vivanco and some other people. And so they interviewed all of them, and then I gave them an hour and a half of information: who they are, why they're here, what their cultures are like, you know, what their technology is like. They censor all of it. All you see is my hand grabbing the camera. In what? There. Yeah. Yeah. I feel, I feel like with them, it's like, and I was going to say the same thing about the UFO hearing. It seems to me it's like all this is kind of like an agenda to put out a very soft disclosure kind of program to mm -hmm. like, you know, and I'm not saying this is for good purposes or whatever, but mm -hmm. I just feel like, you know, it, it it's like the government's way of like kind of playing a seed to like slowly kind of get people to adjust the idea of disclosure that aren't, um, you know, awakened to it and might yeah. freak out. Well, they think they're the only ones that knows what know what's going on, and so, you know, I I know people in the military and things, and they go, "How'd you know that? How'd you know that?" And I said, you know, and I go, "Cause I'm talking to them." You know, it's like. <laughs> You know, and they don't even, you know, when the government says we don't know who they are, a lot of them don't. A lot of them don't know who they are because they're dealing with, they have been dealing with low level stuff and they don't well, it's know. It's like the shadow are. government aspect of it too. Well, yeah, there's the dark fleet and everybody's going, oh, they're going to have a, a UFO invasion, you know, with the dark fleet. Well, it's been pretty much taken out. 
<laughs> they don't have fleet to do it with. And they could do some blue beam and some other stuff, but you know, that's just not gonna fly anymore. I, I keep saying is like everyone knows about this now. Like how how yeah. could they do it? I mean, I guess maybe most of the public isn't really involved in the whole disclosure thing, but I feel like most people know about Plotic Blue Beam by this point. It's like how are they gonna come out and do that when most people have heard I, about I it? I think they can that one because uh if they do do a false invasion, the, the higher beings will interact, you know, and say no just shut it down but just like the nukes you know everybody's going we're gonna have a nuclear war with russia it can't happen they they have total control of this so uh they've proven that they can shut down everything whenever they want they can shut down all the nukes the bases everything even your weapons won't work your guns won't if they decide you know you're not you're not gonna be firing those they don't they and they don't brought work. that up in the hearing which was interesting did you see that no i didn't watch the hearing because you know, it. what I'm just saying, they're missing the whole point. The whole point is that these are very advanced beings, very mm -hmm. spiritually and technology. It's not the little grays. It's not the reptiles. They're here. You know, they've been cleaned up mostly. It's not the, uh, uh, it's these, these beings are us. They're the temple builders. They're our ancient ancestors. And they're billions, some of them are billions of years old. And they're returning right now. And they have, they have technology that to us would look like magic, you know, but to them, it's just everyday stuff. You know, some, some are, are less dense physical. Some have more of an energy body. Some have a magnetized light body and magnetized light ships. And, and uh, there, there's a whole array of beings out there waiting to engage us. But, you know, we also see, we have a physical body and we have, an energy body, we have a light body, we have bodies within bodies all the way back to source. And as we move up the vibration continuum, we can contact all these beings and and beautiful beings. And, but in the lower fourth dimension, there's a lot of crazy stuff. So, you know, in there, you've got negative grays, negative reptilians, you've got gin, you've got astral beings, you've got serpent beings, a lot of crazy stuff is happening in the lower fourth, and that's being cleaned up. But in the higher fourth, lately we've had some beings that came in from, uh, uh, it was uh, Alcyon just recently in their high fourth dimension and a different group and just beautiful beings, but you won't see them unless they choose for you to see them. So they're, they're cloaked. You wouldn't even know they're there. And, and if you ask them to, to drop their fields or whatever, they will. And they're just beautiful beings. You know, they're, they're right there. But again, most of the, we have to rise the occasion, most of the higher dimensional stuff and the real, the real knowledge and wisdom and love and joy and bliss, as well as the technology is with the spiritually and technologically advanced ones. And we're just, this whole controlled narrative is blocking that. It, they, they don't want that to come out, which is sad, you know, because mm -hmm. humanity could take a quantum leap in evolution and restore the earth and the planet and and everything else with with quantum healing and technology and rest you know earth restoration technology all that you know it's something i keep saying with like you know and a lot of other people have brought up on my show is like you know why why are we leaving disclosure up to the government like i think like all of us like we're all disclosure like disclosure yeah. is up to us you know especially you know the work you do with your ranch i mean that's disclosure like why do why are people still waiting for the government? <laughs> because we're programmed. We're social engineered. You know, we wait for the news to tell us what to think and uh, and what's going on. And they don't have a clue. And they're, they're a controlled narrative. You know, it, it's, it's sad because, the um, you know, if you look at all the things, there's a meme I, I posted the other day was really good. And it talked about all the different agencies, you know, and it, and it was saying the news is to make sure you don't know the truth. You know, the military is to make sure there's war. The pharmaceutical companies are there to make sure you're sick. And uh, the banks are there to keep you in poverty. You know, it's 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 really interesting, but that's their goals. And that's, that's about ready to shift. We're going to go through a huge shift here real soon where all that's going to be turned on upside down. And it's happening right now. Yeah. You know, people are going to stop going to big farm and they're going to start going to the gardens and, and uh, start growing their own food and and uh, find out food is their medicine things like that so it's and that's all shifting now 
you know, because of what just happened that we probably shouldn't go into because you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we can kind of just make sure we don't say the right words or something. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, you're, you're, are, are you talking about the uh, shots? Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I've been dealing with that directly because you know, being out here in Hollywood, I've been an actor for years. Like I worked my whole life to do that. And um, I actually got fired off. My last gig was back in September. It was my second time working on Star Trek and they fired me because that was right when those mandates came out. Oh, and yeah. I can't work here anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like, wow. You know, and it's like, you you know, they, they're like, you actually had to put in a database and everything. So it's just, and like, they're even requiring, um, you know, like a booster for the J and J one and they aren't doing, that's like unheard of anywhere else. I mean, they're, they're like yeah. really, really, uh, getting crazy with it, with the industry here. It's, well, yeah, it, it, it makes me wonder, I don't know if like the A-listers are doing this or if they're just. I don't know. It's really weird. I don't know. I try to stay away from Hollywood. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I stay as far as away from Hollywood as I can. But I've, I feel I've like my my thing is like being on the battleground here. I feel like I don't know. Yeah. I do a lot with like different, you know, rebel underground kind of movements here, and it's been interesting. So there's a there's still a fighting. Lot, <laughs> a lot of people have come out here and have seen the ships and just had their minds blown, and and some of them have a full blown meltdown just because the energy here. Wow. And they go, they go, can I get some alcohol? Can I get some pot? And I said, no, <laughs> not, not here. You don't need it. You know, just, you know, it's time to face your stuff. And, you know, this energy is, it's a golden opportunity to heal here. You don't need any drugs or alcohol or anything. You can just, uh, and if you want, if you want to ex experience this ecstatic bliss, just hook up with these beings that are here. <laughs> You know, it's that like sounds amazing. Better than any drug, you know, that you'll ever take. Yeah, you know, so I I know there's like I've had several friends tell me of experiences they've had at your ranch. I mean, you, everyone I've talked to have said they they've had like experiences with like several different beings at your <laughs> ranch. So it seems like there's a lot going on there. I would definitely be interested in checking. Yeah, you definitely you have to come uh, check it out. It's in what they call the purple zone. And th these are government maps where there's extreme magnetic magnetic anomalies. And and oh. we're in this purple zone. And there's two ley lines that cross here as well. So it's oh, in no a way. Spot. So so it's it's an incredible vortex. So the veils between worlds are very thin here. And you can have incredible, we see spontaneous healings happen here all the time. People make contact, they have connections. Uh, it's, it's an amazing place, but there's a, there's a, it's a two edged sword because the energy also brings all your stuff up. So, so it's like your, your stuff is going to come up at the same time. And so it's a golden opportunity to heal or you're going to project and blame mode. And that doesn't work here because people yeah. don't entertain it. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I've experienced that in, you know, other places are similar with like, you know, very um, interesting energetic places like Sedona and Mount Shasta. Yeah. And I, I know what you're saying. It's like, you know, everything that needs to like be healed will just come up. And it's, it's almost like, you know, if you had a crazy like mushroom trip before, it's like, yeah. you know, like, you know, these things that comes up and then you have to work through them and yeah so yeah hawaii hawaii is the same way we're starting it's it's about a year out but we're building a retreat center in hawaii and wow. we're in the same thing we're on the we're in this zone that is incredible and there's ships every night we're seeing several ships you know a night and big ships big gold ships hovering off the coast uh, what island it's on the big island it's okay but uh, we're seeing uh, um, we had the the elders show up and and the, the old Hawaiian goddesses and things like that, and we're having all these interdimensional things happen there. And and there's a place on the land I go. This is really old, and we felt the energy there. This is a homestead. This is very old, ancient, and we found these big poi pounding blocks and things like that. There that, that are hundred year year old poi blocks and stuff there you know so it's you can feel the ancestors there and, and the energy <clears throat> there so it's it's uh it's quite interesting you know it, it's i'm always guided to 
places that are zones where where you can help people make contact or or heal or connect with these higher dimensional beings. Hawaii used to be a part of Lemuria, right? Like that was like the yeah. I think it was like Hawaii and the west coast of California. They say yeah, the Azores, the, everything on the, the ocean there are the mountaintops of Atlantis. That's what's left of Atlantis is the Azores and. Lemuria goes, there's parts, places in California, there are parts of Lemuria and parts of, uh, uh, yeah, Hawaii's part of it. And uh, uh, there's there's a couple other places. I mean, it's a pretty big place. Yeah, but, so most of it's under the ocean here. I haven't really yeah. heard much about pyramids being under the ocean in the Pacific. It seems to be mostly under the Atlantic from what I've heard. Yeah, there are some, there are some, they're finding a few, but uh, they're every, pyramids are everywhere. People are going to be shocked when they find out there, there's, uh, I mean, there's one just close to us and there's one up on the mountain too. And there's also massive carvings on the mountain, on Mount Adams. And there's a door to the inner earth and beings come in and out, ships come in and out of that. It's a big light door that opens up and, uh, there's different levels to it. It's it's like a galactic uh, airport there, you know, in the mountain. But uh, I was going to ask, is it is there like mountain climbing, like trails going up the mountain? Because I'm like yeah. super into mountain climbing. And that oh, yeah, like a really yeah, fun yeah. Climb. And it's not that hard of a climb. Uh, it's not that bad of a climb. And there's a lot of people go up there and they they see the lights. And, and right in front of us, there's an area they call it the fairy lights. And, and nobody goes there. They go, don't go there. You'll go crazy. And I know people have gone up oh. there and they weren't, they weren't ready for what they saw. And, and it took them about a week to even talk about it. It, <laughs> it turned them upside down. And wow. they, this guy's like the guy that went up there. He's like something like a fifth degree black belt. And this guy's fearless. And he went up there. He came back humbled. Like, like, uh, I wasn't ready for this, <laughs> you know? How many miles is it to go up the mountain and back down? It's not that far. It, it's not that far. It's it's uh, people. So you can do it in one day. If you get up really early and just really book it, you can make it up there in one day. But most people go up and then camp. There's a place called Lunch Counter up there. And they, they go up there and they camp there. And then they do the rest of it and then come back down the hole. The next yeah, I did my first like major mountain climb, like tall mountain last year at uh Half Dome in Yosemite. And yeah. that was that was rough. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah. yeah, it was worth it though. It was worth it. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely like to check out that mountain. I've been talking about it with uh Jermaine. It sounds uh like it'd be a really fun climb. Yeah, yeah, it would be interesting. The uh uh you know, I've been up there a lot. I've been all over that mountain. And there's there's some strange stuff going up there. Most of it's benevolent, but there was some some grays messing with people up there. But the benevolent beings came in and kind of cleaned them out. Uh, they're messing with the gate guards, and it's part of it's on the Yakima Nation. And uh, uh, I, I saw them. They, they really messed with us one day, one night. And... You know, I had to break the contact, the telepathic, because they make a telepathic contact and they'll they'll project the most hideous energy at you sometimes. Like you're going to die in the next moment, extreme dread and all this stuff. And you have to go, not mine. This is not mine and break it. And then and then when you see them, they freak out when they when they know that you broke that connection and you overrode their pro program. And then and then, you know, like they're not very strong. They're very weak and we can break them very easy just by grabbing them. But uh, the, uh, the, their ability to immobilize people, you know, with technology in their own mind as well is uh, if, if they can't do that, they're in trouble, you know, they're in big trouble. So the, uh, but I was talking about that. I said, God, right up there, we're doing a vision quest, a friend of mine and I, and we got totally harassed by these things. And I had a camera. I was trying to film it. Every time I aimed the camera up, it would go off. They wouldn't let me use the camera, uh, which was weird. But uh, but I was I was back at the ranch and I was pointing up there. And I go, you know, somebody needs to take, get the, rid of those guys. That's a sacred space. And right when I was talking, I was pointing up there. I saw a big 
blue flash in the sky and the ship came down like this on fire like smoking and, uh, and then and then that that evening that night um ships came down and picked up the pieces picked up all the pieces you know so uh so there there are they are you know if we initiate things we ask for protection we ask for help they will you know they'll come in and step in <laughs> wow that's a uh... That's really wait. So the there were like ships from there. There's like group that came down and got them. That was Pleiadians. The pieces? Yeah. Oh well, wow! No, the Pleiadians smoked them. <laughs> I hate to say it, but they have technologies. It's weird. There's a huge reptilian ship coming in once, and everybody's all oh, they're all excited and everything. I go, I got a bad feeling about that ship. That's not a good ship. And they had red and green lights on them, and that's a kind of a giveaway. And and uh, that they they just didn't look good you know they didn't look right and when it was coming in and uh the uh had no strobe or anything on it and then all of a sudden again we saw this big blue flash in the sky and then we just saw powder it it was like and i asked them why what happened what was that about and they said well they they were they were coming in to do harm they were they were kind of and so we met them with the same intention and and they and I said, well, what'd you hit them with? And they said, it's like a, it, it's a beam that dematerializes. It breaks the bond of everything, and it goes back into a powder. It's like almost everything is crystalline form, and when you break the bond on it, they go back to the original crystalline form. But this this thing just, it looked like somebody just like emptied out a big giant can of talcum powder up there, you know, and that was it. But uh, there is a lot of that going on right now. There is a lot of uh, the white hats and uh, are taking out the dumbs and and the 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 deep underground bases and things. There's a lot of cleanup going on. It's been going on for a long time. I think it's 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 over ninety percent done. But there are still some some nasties running around. You're talking about the the reptilian bases. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's the reptilians, there's the royal reptilians, and there's some serpent beings that are really You know, weird. you know what's interesting? Before I even like knew about like the secret space program and all this stuff, like you know, probably like seven, eight years ago here in Hollywood, I was kind of hanging out with like these Hollywood kind of elite people, and they were talking about this that there were um re reptilian like underground bases and that there were people going in and um cleaning out these spaces and i'm just like what what are you guys talking like this is kind of crazy and i well i kind of knew what reptilians were at that point but it was interesting because then i started hearing about this later in the ufo community it was kind of weird that i heard it from these like hollywood elite people yeah it was interesting <laughs> yeah it's, but, been going, it's been going on for quite some time but it's really hands-on right now and, and now there's whole fleets of, of the very spiritually and technologically advanced beings are coming in now. And they've got, they've got massive motherships. that are all linked up. That's, I, you have that footage that. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. And that's from NASA. Can we talk while that's playing? Um, I'm not right. sure actually. So I think this is going to, I can pull it up another way or here, let me just try this real quick and then I'll take it down if it doesn't work like that. Okay. Okay. Can you talk? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. There we go. Nice. Okay. So we took the sound off because this guy was just like swearing like crazy and freaking out. But there, this is a NASA live feed and you can see these objects coming in and they're just wow. massive objects are coming in. And we've been filming, you know, we, we we're getting five in one frame. I filmed up to 36 one time all together that just came over and it wasn't the, uh, the Starlink because we know when they launched the Starlink. And we actually filmed, we got some really good footage of the Starlink. And we have good footage of the space station with ships docking and going in front of it and following it and everything. And, and there was nothing in the air. No, no shuttles. The shuttles were grounded and there was no Russian space fleet docking with it or Falcons or anything. But uh, we have a lot of that. But you can see these. These are like flotillas of ships coming in. And they're almost like little cities where all the ships are parked. They're like docked. Uh, so that, that's like a cluster of a bunch of little ships right there. Yeah. Yeah. There's wow. a whole cluster and they're all like docked together uh, when they're coming in. 
And, and so, you know, it's just, you can see motherships. There's big motherships that are cruising there. But the, uh, um, this is on Roku, the, uh, the NASA live feed. You can actually sign up for it. And watch no way it. on Roku. Yeah. And they shut it off. They, they, you know, this guy was filming. He goes, look at this, look at this. And he's, he's filming it. He said, look at the ships here. Look at, look how many ships are here. And then uh, all of a sudden it, it cuts off and you can see he's pointing at it. It's the live feed. Yeah, there's a one that comes in at the end here that is like insane. Yeah, about to come up here. Oh, this, this one right one. here. Look at wow. this. <laughs> wow. So they're here. I mean, they're here. NASA knows they're here. Um, there are, you know, the secret space fleet is working with them. There's a federation, uh, federation of worlds. You know, there's levels upon levels upon levels. There's there's councils, you know, there's Ryan Council of Light, there's the Andromedan Council, there's a lot of different councils that are all working together right now. And, and uh, it's multidimensional and, and it's so far beyond this little narrative that the disclosure thing they're doing right now. It's, the, I mean, that's like, that's like the uh, the shavings office. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it is. It's, it's just not. It's, it's, it's like so disclosure primitive. for kindergartners. Yeah, it's so primitive. It's just like, seriously, guys, y you wonder why we don't have contact. You wonder why th the governments aren't being contacted. You wonder why the masses aren't being. And actually, the government has been working with some of the regenerate ones for a long time. But uh, mm -hmm. that's all being cleaned up, too, now. So with the dark fleet and the and the, the, you know, the Nazi stuff and everything, they've been dealing with that stuff for a long time but that's been that's come to an end what's some um, these different councils you just mentioned or like what are you what do you know about like the galactic federation of light like i've heard like that's like actually a negative group and then i've heard i don't know i've heard a lot of different there's things two, yeah there's a federation there's a gray um the gray alliance and and these guys just stay away from them. They're the Greys and the reptilians and all these guys. And they a lot of people hook up with them and they think they're channeling Jesus sometimes or other things. And they get implants and chips. And it they're they're just bad news. You don't want to hook up with these guys. And so it's like the the gray, the reptilian, and the other ones, the liberators are like when those ships that we just saw, I asked who. Oh no. He was sharing a little bit too much information again. The uh, Archons just took him out. Uh... <laughs> okay, there you go. You're back. Yeah, they don't, like, they don't like me talking about this, but I mean, there, there's a a massive planetary liberation thing going on. So one thing people need to realize there's so much inhumanity happening on the earth is because there's so much non-human interference. And a lot of these beings like high level beings, whatever you want to call them, the global elite, the Illuminati, whatever, they, they turn their souls over to these demonic reptilian and things like that. And so that's why there's so much just crazy stuff going on and, and it's so sick that people can't handle it if people knew how sick things you know with the the pedophile and the sex traffic all that stuff and how deep that goes it, it's uh and i think that's why i'm censored out of hollywood because they go don't let him talk about that you know like we can't have him on you know because uh but that's tied into yeah, that that's tied into the luciferian satanic stuff and and it's all connected but there's a higher order too the benevolent ones are coming in too so so there's a big cleanup underway and and these guys are their days are numbered they're they're being taken out yeah definitely you know and there, there definitely feels like there's been like kind of a major awakening process that's been taking place on the planet the last few yeah. years here and it's like it's almost like all the dark stuff has to like come up to the light to be exposed or like washed yeah. clean you know you know we're we're moving into a highly energized place in space we've never been before the whole electromagnetic lights like spectrum is off the scale there's new bands uh it's the human resonance is off the scale the earth is a lot of people think they're having strokes and heart attacks it's the earth 
your heart's attuned to the earth and the earth is changing. So it's, it's creating wow. glitches, you know, and people are having problems, but, uh, and aches and pains and everything is part of the ascension process. So the whole earth is ascending and going to the next level. And there's no way to stop this. This is galactic. It's beyond galactic. It goes all the way back to source, but it's tied into all the suns and the central sun and they're all connected. So the suns are, are off the scale in as far as their, the solar flares and the coronal mass ejections, the Schumann resonance, the earth is just, you know, again, it's whited out the Schumann resonance. And, uh, and so, you know, it, it's, it's undeniable we're in it. We're getting bombarded by, you know, 500 on up hits from other sources. And we don't know where these energies are coming from. And it's really shaking the earth up quite, a, quite a bit. So, so a lot of that chaos that we're seeing, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And a lot of this really ugly stuff that we're seeing, it's, it's all the hidden stuff. And it's part of the healing. It's part of the process. And our own bodies are talking to us. And a lot of stuff coming up in our bodies, it's our bodies trying to heal itself, you know. So, so there's a lot, there's challenges, you know, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, you know, spiritual challenges. There's challenges on every level. And what I tell people right now is, there's really good, good mantras like this too shall pass, you know, don't get freak out, you know, just relax and, and, and then ask for help, ask for healing. And, uh, and I always, I always, I always go into that. There's times I think I'm going to die that night and then I wake up and I'm fine. You know, I, I felt like that during the la the eclipse that took place. Like, what was that? Like last week, week and a half ago. I don't know why every time there's an eclipse like that just like really affects me. And I don't know the yeah. energy like that night. I was just, it was crazy. Well, it's like the, the lights go out and all the dark shit comes out. So. Yeah. Right. And then the light comes back on and it shines a light on everything. So it's like it's just like, wow. OK, actually, I, I, I totally just remember just now, too, as I was saying that I saw a post from you when I was going through it. You posted something on Facebook and you're like, people are going to go through this tonight with this eclipse. And then the next day it's going to be like completely snap back to normal. Yeah. And like I was like, OK, maybe I should just calm down. I'll just ride this out. <laughs> And then it was yeah. totally like that. And the next day, it's just like, oh, it's all good. It's yeah, so to learn to surrender, you know, surrender to the to the God within, you know, just go within and surrender, and just you know, this too will pass. And then it's really important to learn what's yours and what's not yours because there's so many thoughts and emotions and psychic turbulence going on that's not even ours, and people yeah. are reacting to it. They're in reactionary mind and they're just reacting to it and. And I was, I was, you know, self master is about practicing loving detachment and not being attached to anything external, you know, external love, joy, bliss, acceptance, approval, all that stuff. Just, just let go of all the external stuff and go internal and you'll get through this process. But if you, if you keep focusing on the external, you're going to be led through reaction your mind through all this crazy crap going on. It's going to be insane. But if you go within, you'll be guided and you'll get through this stuff and you'll get you'll receive healing and guidance and and things like that. So it's 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 basically internal is the way to go. It's the way to, to get through this stuff and get your own inner guidance, make your own contact and make your own personal connection with creator. You know, that's the key. It's all it's all about self-empowerment, you know, and personal okay. responsibility in the end. You know what you were saying about the what the sun is what is happening with the sun right now. It's interesting because I was getting a lot of downloads about this kind of before I start hearing people talk about it. It was coming. Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting. And, um, you know, I've, I've read a little bit about this, but I don't know if you can say anything on this about this being a cyclical thing. Like this maybe happen happens like every so many thousand years or so. Oh, yeah, this, it's it's like the yugas, you know. There's that we're going through cycles, but it's not it's not like a repeat. It's a spiral, so mm -hmm. it's an ascending spiral, and so so we're so going even through, after the great year, it's still spiraling to a different place. Yeah, it's an ascending spiral. So we're moving up, or we're we're uh, once. I mean, it's quite a few years ago, but I was doing these yoga classes, 
and uh, this I had a brilliant teacher and and part of the class was she says, okay, um, I want you to sit down and and first we're going to meditate and we're going to get really clear what's bothering you today. Get it down to like two words if you can or a sentence. What are you dealing with? And all of a sudden, like out of 30 people, 25 would come up with the same thing. And so wow. this happened again and again and again. And so we started realizing, okay, there's there's group lessons. There's planetary lessons going on. And one, it might be support. Two, it might be family. Three, it might be abundance. Four, it might, you know, it might be uh, relatives. You know, I'm dealing with, you know, relative, you know, and, and it's really weird how, how when you get down to it, it's always one thing, you know, I'm dealing with fear, I'm dealing with rejection or something. And, and if you're, if you're done with that, it doesn't affect you. If you still have issues, it affects you. And, and so when these, these energies come through and there's cycles, there's, there's like lessons. And, and that's what I'm saying right now is, is everything is increasing. If you don't get it, it's going to hit you, you know, like I was meditating watching Babaji, Babaji told me that some people are going to get hit with a feather. Some people are going to get hit with a brick. You know? and, <laughs> That's uh, a great analogy. Yeah. So it depends on your frequency. And it's all about frequency. And the people that are still doing these heinous things and everything are not frequency specific to the planet and the ascension that's going on. So they're imploding and their worlds are collapsing and their kingdoms are collapsing. And so you're going to see this big implosion and, and they're going to be, you know, the karma is being accelerated as well. So everything is being accelerated and, and, uh, and their, their, their only salvation is to quit and turn all their energies and resources to the awakening healing process. That's the only way. And even then they still got karma, you know, but uh, you know, it's really, you, you just, you can't keep doing, they can't keep doing what they've been doing. And when I'm talking about the dark hearts, that that game is over. We're going to a whole new game. The whole earth is going. So if you're on the earth, uh, you can't stay and keep playing the old games. You know, some of these like, you know, darker individuals or um, are, are they like, do you think they're kind of playing out things like maybe they're a star seed or they're like connected ancestrally? to like some darker et races like reptilians or something and that's kind of what they're playing out here right now you know there there's so much going on there's a lot of that going on a lot of past life stuff going on and connections being healed uh, a lot of even in the ufo community there's a lot of trauma going on that people are yeah. healing and they're making it public they shouldn't you know because it always looks bad you never want a character <laughs> assassinate or attack another thing you know that that's a career killer, you know? So, um, but, uh, you know, it's like, let's keep it, keep it high and keep it positive and keep it, you know, and share that and keep your connection. Cause if you're connected to these really advanced beings, they're, they're not going to be condemning somebody and they just don't do that. They'll, they'll say something like, well, they're working on their stuff or something like that. You know, they won't go, Oh, they're, you know, they get all freaked out, but it just, it, it does, and that, and you start losing that connection when you get into that petty stuff. And, yeah, and, and it becomes. You know, that, a that's what I've been saying about the disclosure community on my show quite a bit. With you know different discussions with people, it's like I, I just feel like you know it's like people will like bring up all this drama with these different people in the community, and to me, I'm like, why aren't we giving these people like room to go through their own things? Like, no one's a perfect person. Like, we all have to exactly. work through things. And, you know, it bothers me. It's like people get like, you know, it's almost like some of these people, they kind of are, I guess, kind of celebrities in, in this scene. I guess that's kind of the problem is like people are yeah. sometimes like almost worshiping these individuals when they're just like a regular person that has things that they're going through, yeah. too, you know? Exactly. That's the whole thing. It's like they're people. They're doing the best they can. They're going through their own stuff. And, and that's OK. It's part of the process. We don't have to attack them because they're going through something you know it, it's that's ridiculous it's like and hopefully they'll go through it and get back on track again and be an asset you know so uh and, and that's what i see over and over again it's just have to get away from the from all the drama and, and the other stuff and get focused on 
you know, raising our consciousness and raising our frequency so we can stay in contact. And which goes back to this disclosure thing that's happening. It's just like, uh, I've, I've never seen, it's, it's, it's so primitive. I, I can't, and I, and I look at these people, and I go, is this an act? I, th this that's what I can't, I can't tell. Like, I can't tell if it's, they just blatantly are lying or if they really don't know. That's what like I think it's just a shadow are, government are they thing. That barbaric in consciousness, or or are they that evil? You know, you might say. I, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, you know, you were talking about the um, nuclear disarmament that is happening from the, you know, ET, ET is coming here and disarming the the nukes, and they brought that up during the hearing, and the people that were running the task force, they're just like, we weren't aware of that. We didn't hear about it. It's like no. that was like probably the most important thing that has happened. Like, how did how would you not like that? Would seems like it'd be something that would be important for someone that's a part of like you know defense of our country. And yeah, I know they did it with our nukes and they and they did it with Russia's nukes. And I don't know if China probably had some experiences too. I wouldn't be surprised. But I mean, their people are walking around down here, and they're the higher dimensional beings are cruising around down here, and they're not going to let a nuke go off. Come on, it's going to affect. That whole that messes up the whole time frame and everything. So it, it's uh I mean, but what about like when Hiroshima happened? Like what did they just kind of let that happen for it to be like kind of a first time for people to I, see I think, I think what Hiroshima happened? Was, Hiroshima's like, oh crap, they they found the matches, you know. Uh, yeah. Because all of a sudden after Hiroshima and that stuff happened, all of a sudden this there was all kinds of UFO activity during that time. And and that sent a signal out like, hey, are are these guys going to do themselves in? Are they going to totally uh, destroy the, the planet? And uh, are they going to move on? You know, what are they going to choose? And so, and so now they're here, kind of overseeing that and making sure, you know, that none of this happens again. But uh, you know, those are primitive times. A lot of decisions were made where people thought they're in the interest of of national security and things like that and and they weren't and they and they align with some darker entities for technology and for weapons and things like that which was a really bad move and and that's coming to an end right now and the benevolent ones are here and they're saying okay enough of this yeah so uh enough the thing about it is is that you know enough people are asking for help right now and so they can come in the more we initiate help and ask for help and the more we rise in consciousness, the more they can come in. And, and that's so important. And that's what I mean. This, you know, if you get into Antichrist, what's going on is anti-disclosure. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the same thing. It's almost the same thing. It's anti-Christ consciousness, anti, it's anti-truth, it's anti, uh, it's a controlled narrative. And it's, and these guys need to just, get over themselves you know like and and when they you know they they i see what they're doing and and my only question is are are you knowingly doing this are you paid to do this are you just ignorant you know which which one are you there's there's no other options right now we've got evil we've got ignorant we've got morally and and spiritually challenged you know there's there's just three or four boxes you can choose, but we can't say that this is beneficial. You know, yeah. someone else brought up to me, and I thought this was an interesting point that what if it could be possible that maybe a lot of these people are going through an awakening process, like in the government where, um, you know, like, like some people, like I didn't really necessarily ever have this cause I was raised by like energy healers and stuff, but you know, like some people, like they, like go through a crazy awakening part way through their life where they're like oh wow like you know this stuff is going on and then like it's almost traumatic for them and like there's like different stages of like denial and like anger yeah. and then acceptance someone mentioned to me like what if, what if actually like a lot of people in congress or you know this task force are actually kind of going through this right now where they're like realizing this is going on and they're like going through those stages yeah well, there might be some doing that, but I mean, you look at who's heading it. 
<laughs> you know, uh, you know, Adam, Adam Schiff. Um, yeah, I'm that's, gonna, that's gonna, no good. <laughs> that's like, that's like going to Satan and say, we want, <laughs> we want uh, <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> we want ice oh water. You know, I you know, know. that's kind of scary, but but I mean, I I know that guy's soul. I know what he's up to. I know what he's been up to. I know who he's aligned with, and and there there comes a thing where you just have direct knowing. You just know. You look at somebody, and you just know. They're yeah, you just look in his eyes. I mean, you can't watch that's enough right there. You can't his eyes him. remind me of the aliens off Mars Attack. Yeah. Yeah, you can't watch them. You can't listen to them. They make you sick almost. And you go, I, this guy is emanating some energy that is just so dark. And and so so I mean, why why are they even asking this guy? You know what I mean? <laughs> head, why are they even asking him? This guy's a pathological liar. It's proven over and over again. And you want him to be the head of this truth movement. <laughs> You yeah, know? I mean that's yeah, that's definitely done it's by so ridiculous. Design. It's it's just so it's like a slap in the face. It's it's like it, you know, it's like an insult to people's intelligence to do this. And everybody should just say, okay, you you we're gonna give you all Oscars now. Can we quit with this? <laughs> can we stop all this theater and this nonsense? And can we get on with what's important? Like maybe the awakening healing, you know, the plantar yeah. liberation, the restoration of the earth, the quantum healing technologies. And can we move on to that and stop all this other nonsense? Because, you know, we, why should they work with this? If we're doing that, why, why should they contact these people? You know, why should they try to educate these people? It's like, they're not going to, you know, they haven't risen to the occasion. So, so it goes back to, you know, open mind, loving heart, pure intent. And, and you can't be morally or integrally, cha integrity challenged. You know, you can't be getting a payoff for this. You know, like, uh, you know, I want, I want, uh, these are a threat. So we need funding. You know, we need to build bigger and better weapons. You're never going to outgun these beings. You know, they, their technology, they could turn this plant into a sender if they wanted to. And the only thing that's stopping the negative ones from doing that is the positive ones. So, so we really need to start working with the benevolent ones, the spiritually and technologically advanced ones, and move in that direction. And, and you know, all these shows, Hollywood shows, I hate to say it, but like ancient aliens, they're part of the controlled narrative. And I saw that played out right in front of my face, you know, and I've seen that happen over. I used to be on, on I used to be on the History Channel and all that stuff. And I was given all the ancient history and, and UFOs in the Bible, UFOs then and now. I've been on all that stuff. But when you go to the next level, all of a sudden you're like blackballed. You're, you're, I, I always say like they don't go deep enough on those shows. No. It's like just the tip, <laughs> not deep enough. Yeah. I was, watching, I was watching this show the other day and they're, they, these are the, the, the paradoxes that nobody can solve. And then they had all this. The next one was uh, uh, what's happening in the universe and is there life out there and stuff like this. And I'm, I'm watching this thing and I'm just going, Oh my God, this is like kindergarten. Like, and these are the top brains on the planet. Right. And, and you know, they're, they're talking about the Drake equation and all this other stuff. And I go, all you need to do is look at that equation. I think there's something like 300 billion planets out there that can support life in the milky way galaxy there's like 500 billion galaxies out there and that's just in the dimension we're in and you add the other dimensions that how can there not be extremely advanced beings out there it's insane to think there aren't and the people go, why haven't they come here i go well, look how we're behaving you know they if you rise to the occasion if you create if you anchor in higher consciousness and energy if you bring a place that that in, embeds the unity consciousness and works under universal law, they'll come. And But we have to create a space for that to happen. And there's no space for that to happen at these disclosure things. You know, it, it's, it's yeah. just too much drama. You know, when you, when you were talking earlier about, um, you know, quantum healing and, you know, these like yeah. amazing aspects of disclosure that would bring humanity to a whole new level, it's like, you know, something I always think about is what, I mean, how, 
why can't we just like come together to do this like how can that be done like like I don't know. <laughs> it's like, dude, these like the scientists that have been working on this technology. Like, I, I know a lot of you know scientists that have been trying to come out with suppressed technology. And, like a lot of times they get suicided. Um, but it's like I, I feel like we need to be thinking about how we can bring disclosure out in our own hands. I, I mean, I guess I think a lot of people the, the already are. But... To create a space for it. So if you're going to bring this technology out, you have to create a space for it. And that's that that space has to be secure. It has to be brilliant people of like mind that are, are uh, in service to others, you know, and, and you got to have a space for that to happen. And and we just haven't created that space. There are certain countries that that are more open to that happening. It will probably come out through other countries, but. I mean, yeah, South we're, America we're, is very in tune with the ETH. Yeah, yeah, there are some places in South America. And, you know, Mexico is totally open to this stuff. It's amazing. There's all kinds of technologies coming out there. A lot of the suppressed healing technologies are going on in Mexico. Really? And, and so a lot of these people are, are other countries will be getting like med beds and things like that first, probably. The quantum technology, even Russia. Russia has amazing technologies, healing technologies, and it's all being done with frequencies and things like that. And they have devices they're building there that are incredible. But, uh, you know, is but we have to demonize them. You know, we have to make them the bad guys. You know, we have to we have to have a war. You know, it's like we have to we always have to have a threat and to keep the war industry going and things like that. So it's, you're never going to have peace as long as that program's running. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just clicked something weird here. What the heck? Yeah, I saw that. It's... What did I just do? Oh, all right, all right. Oh, there you go. There you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. I know when I get a show up, I don't touch anything. <laughs> like I, like because I can't get back easily if something yeah, happens. I, I'm a Virgo, so for me, it's like anytime Mercury is in retrograde, I'm like, okay, I need someone else to help me run this right now, or else it's all just gonna go crazy. Yeah, um, I mean, like just before the show, my whole computer was doing a meltdown. It wouldn't open. It wouldn't open anything. It was just like I go, no, not now. And luckily, I have Lydia's a friend. Of mine came and she got it all up and going help but uh, nice. uh yeah it, it's interesting it's it's uh um you know the thing about it is the energy coming in right now is undeniable it's measurable nasa knows about it they know that we're going through a highly energized place in space they know we're going through a quantum shift and and uh it's it's all measurable there's no way to deny it anymore and a lot of the chaos we're seeing is part of the healing. And a lot of the dark, ugly stuff is a good thing. Actually, it's all coming up where it's hidden before. And the trick is to, is to keep it keep it moving, keep it healing, you know, keep it, don't let it consume you, don't let it take you down, but just keep it, you know, keep releasing the past, you know, just keep letting go and and, you know, we have all this trauma. We have like past life trauma. We have childhood trauma. Uh, we have all this stuff in our fields. And the more we clear and heal that and, and get back to the higher frequencies of love and bliss and service to others and joy and things like that, the, the higher our frequencies will go up because thought has a frequency. And so the more we, we heal and release the past, our frequency is going to go up. The body starts healing. We start having contact with these higher dimensional beings. And, and it is so important now to, to really work on ourselves and go within and and own what you're feeling and not project and blame and, and just sit with it and breathe into it and ask for help to pass it through. Because we all inside of us, we all have the, we have this what I call the big eraser that comes in and goes never happened, you know, <laughs> and uh, and the frequencies are so high when we connect to that energy, you can heal very quickly and gracefully and. And things things just get erased, uh, but we have to do the work, and it's internal. Definitely. Well, I I really uh, appreciate you coming on the show today, and this was a really epic conversation. Really enjoyed talking with you, James. No, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> uh, so, is there anything? Uh, we've been going live for about an hour now, so I think I should.
probably get ready to wrap this up. So is there anything you want to say in closing? You know, the main thing we always close with is, you know, keep an open mind, loving heart and pure intent and don't get caught up in all the drama and get into creationary mind and start creating the world you want to see and work in that direction. Don't get into reactionary mind because they're going to throw so many things at you to get you into that reactionary mind that yeah. uh, it, it'll throw you into that sea of chaos. And so we need to get out in nature, uh, meditate, you know, and uh, go within and, and basically release the past and raise our frequencies and we'll get through this. Oh yeah, I definitely agree. You know, I, every time I'm kind of stuff is coming up for me, I've realized if I just start working on art or, you know, go on a hike um, yeah. or start working with your hands, like, do, like on a project, like woodworking thing or something, it, it really it just clears everything out. You feel so much better. And it's like, just kind of, almost puts yeah, you in a meditative been, state when you work on things like that. I've been working so hard lately because I've been the Hawaii place getting that together. I've been up at five in the morning till dark, just straight through. And I'm so busy now. I just don't have time. I don't have time to engage all the drama. Yeah. And and, and I have I have a t-shirt that says I'm just sitting here. You know, so so all <laughs> but you are going on around me and I'm just sitting here going, that's nice. And practicing loving detachment and not getting hooked into these in into all these different dramas and when you get into that space you can see everything really clearly and you can see what's Definitely. really normal. you can see underneath the chaos and what's really happening and it's just people healing working their stuff out you know and and, uh, and sometimes they get very angry if you don't play <laughs> you know, you go, Definitely. You go, yeah yeah you just go oh you know let's have fun with that you know, I got some ditches to dig. You know? <laughs> I got some some uh, some spears to make. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In my case. Get into your creativity. Awesome. Well, okay. Um, let me see here. So you have uh for people to reach you, there's the uh, or I guess reach your or learn more about your ranch. There's a eStudy.org here. Yeah. That's the mountain right there. It's a beautiful mountain. That's my that's my front yard. <laughs> is there always snow on that mountain, or is it just uh, um... pretty much until uh, July? And there's always snow on the top, on the very top. So you yeah. need like kind of like uh, snowshoes for going up. up yeah, there crampons. <laughs> you go up the top. And you need some crampons. Basically, is all you need. Some boots and crampons because it's like it freezes and you know at the top. I think he froze up again, but I'll keep uh, going to the site here. It looks like there's a little portal here, labyrinth. So, yeah, and it looks like um, he has a lot of different events going on all the time. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. That's over here at eSETI.org. Um, I guess while I'm waiting for him to unfreeze, I'll do a little right. shameless self-promotion. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you want to check out my spears, go over to shamanspears.com. If you want to help fund my show and keep me going here. I have, yeah, uh, I'm, waiting. My, I'm waiting for my spirit. Give me a yeah. Spirit. You know, I, I actually started making a new collection. So uh, I wanted to, I had some colors in mind for you and I wanted to do like a longer stock. When I told you, before that I want to make one, I didn't really have the right staff size. Cause I, I go out and I pick all the bamboo myself out oh, here nice. in Spina Canyon. Yeah. And I just got like my new bamboo, like cured and ready to go. So I'm working on a new collection now. I'm definitely going to send you one from the newer collection. I feel like I, I want to give you like a more staff size one. So that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I have, I have fun with axes and spears and all that stuff. I know these are more ornamental, but, uh, Oh, you said you do axe throwing, right? You were mentioning yeah. that before the show. Well, You're getting an axe do, throwing do it once and stick them and things like that, and, and just archery and you know any hand-eye coordination and and it's more of a spiritual thing. But uh, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I've actually been wanting to learn archery. Um, so yeah, that that sounds really cool. I haven't done axe throwing before. That um, that sounds really interesting. Kind of dangerous. Yeah, there's a video. <laughs> I think there's a video on the site where I'm throwing, throwing two axes at the same time and just. Oh, wow. 
next to each other. It's kind of funny, but uh, we have fun with that. You know, we're out in the woods. You know, so what else are we gonna do? <laughs> Well, that's always uh, fun. Do you, do you guys shoot guns out there too? Yeah, you know, I, I don't hunt anymore. I did. I was raised with a hunting family. And uh, uh, so I don't hunt anymore, but I do. Yeah, I have I I'm, I have some pistols and some rifles. And we like to go out every once in a while and go shooting just for the heck of it. But we don't shoot yeah. animals. You know, we just, we'll I'm the same them. way. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to have to come out there for an event soon. I, I would really like that. So, um, thanks James for James for coming on tonight. And this was a really awesome show. So, um, uh, yeah, hopefully I can come around sometime and check out your ranch. Yeah. Yeah. Just let us know, you know, let us know when you want to come up and it'd be good to do a live broadcast from here and do a sky watch. Oh, I'd be down with that. Is there any like uh, meteor showers coming up? I think there is. But I feel like there's one know, in the middle a, of summer, like the person. You want a one. dark moon? Get a, get it on a dark moon. And oh yeah. Clear skies and a dark moon, and you'll see so much stuff. You won't. And we have night vision goggles and all this other equipment, so you can see orbs and light spheres flying all around the property. And Bigfoot comes cruising through now and then. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, James. And thanks, everyone, for joining me tonight here on Apollo's Odyssey. And again, I won't be doing a show for a couple weeks probably here as I'll be going through a whole moving process. But I'll have one in at least two weeks. So uh, thanks, everyone, for joining me tonight. And until next time on Apollo's Odyssey. Over right. now. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks. Thanks, James. Thank you.